Hello, hello. Thank you for joining me today. Dana here. I'm back with another house mouse card using the Knit One stamp set. As always, there will be a supply list down below in the description box with affiliate links when available. If you choose to shop through these links, it does help support me and I do greatly appreciate it. Now let's get on to the making. To start off this card, I took this knitted background stencil from Waffle Flower and a piece of Ranger Heavy Stock in Craft, and I put that on my grip mat. Then using my Distress Crackle Paste in Translucent, I added the paste through the stencil, covering the entire thing. Now the stencil is a 6x6 stencil, and since I'm, this is going to be a 5x7 card, there is a bit on the end that the stencil didn't cover. So to mask that off a bit, I did take a piece of just blue painter's tape, and then I'll, after this dries, I'll come back and, and stencil the rest of it. Once I got all the crackle paste added to the background, I removed the stencil. And then I grabbed my Distress Embossing Glaze in Kitsch Flamingo, and I'm gonna add that onto the wet crackle paste. And I made sure to, encoat, to coat the entire background. And then I set that aside to dry. Now this did dry overnight just because this was the end of my crafty evening. So I just set it aside and I had time for it to dry overnight. You don't need to let it dry overnight depending on where you live. Humidity is a factor in drying time, but usually it's only 15, 20 minutes. And then after it was dry, of course it's warped, but not a problem. Like Tim Holtz says, cardstock does not have a memory. I will flatten this out and glue it down and nobody will ever know. <laughs> but after it was dry, I went ahead and heat embossed all that embossing powder. And if you're unfamiliar with the Distress Embossing Glaze, it is a translucent embossing powder. So since I did this on craft cardstock, the pink is not as vibrant as it normally would be, so just keep that in mind if you do use this embossing powder. And then here's the finished effect. Now it does crackle even with the embossing powder on there, but because it's such a fine area, it's the camera had a hard time picking it up, but in real life, it's a really cool effect. And then off camera, I followed the same steps and I did the other section of the background piece. Then I took this fluted classic ovals die set from Spellbinders and I cut out my focal image just using one of the oval pieces, not one of the fluted pieces. Thank you. 
And then I grabbed a piece of coffee dyed paper, which if y'all saw my last knit one video, you'll know that I have been very much so obsessed with coffee dyeing paper. My house constantly smells like coffee now. <laughs> this is just a piece that I um, dunked in a pan of coffee and then kind of crinkled it up and let it dry. The paper that I coffee dye is just copy paper. So I did glue it down to a piece of white cardstock. And I'm just cutting this in half so that I can fit it through my Platinum 6. Then using the same fluted ovals die set, I took the largest oval and the largest fluted piece and cut, out, and cut it out. Then to add a bit of dimension to the edges, I grabbed my Distress ink in Walnut Stain and I'm just inking around the edges of both pieces. Then I grabbed my favorite decal trimmer and I cut out the background piece. and I inked around the edges of that piece as well.
I don't have any craft card bases that match the heavy stock craft color. So I just took a white five by seven card base and I'm inking around the edges of that in the walnut stain ink. I could have made a card base, but yeah, no, I just get pre-made ones. <laughs> Not worried about it. <laughs> And once I got everything all inked up, I'm gonna go ahead and add on all the layers using my Barely Arts liquid glue. For the background piece, because it was warped, I used a lot of glue and then stuck it under a heavy acrylic block so to make sure that it was adhered nicely and not warped anymore. Then I glued the focal image to the coffee paper with my Barely Arts liquid glue. And I wanted to add a little bit of dimension to that piece, so I popped it up on some foam squares and then added it to the card. And then here's the final card. This very much so reminds me of a cute little framed image that would be in like a grandma's house. I don't know why, maybe it's the colors. I don't know, <laughs> but I'm in love with it. Thank you again for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, take some time to pamper your inner goddess and I will see you in the next one.